I started saying. All right. Should be good, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys. Hi. <laughs> All right. So April and I, obviously, when we try something different, we always have to test it out and make sure it's working. But uh, we, if you aren't part of our Instill Nutrition group, we usually do a Facebook Live every Tuesday. We call it Hot Topic Tuesday. And because of whatever recent changes that Facebook has been doing, we are no longer able to like stream into our groups. Um, unless we want to do this separately, which we've done that a few times and it's very boring. So we want to stay together. <laughs> so we're going to actually, we're on April's timeline, I guess. So maybe we'll actually get some more people seeing us. And, um, you know, if you are not part of the Instill Nutrition uh, Facebook group, definitely join um, really awesome community in there. Kind of a tighter, close-knit community. Um, active, you know, pretty active. People share a lot of stuff. So it's really great. Um, I do. I would just want to add real quick that with our community, it's very, very awesome. Like, like Trish said, it's very intimate, close knit. Um, everybody knows everybody. Lots of support, encouragement, positivity, all that good stuff. Um, but we just wrapped up our ten day detox challenge, and we had some pretty awesome results. So mm -hmm. anyway, if y'all want to get in, we usually do weekly challenges um, that are very simple. You know, that can kind of help along you know help everybody along with their goals without having to completely overhaul and do a 180 on your whole life which Trish and I are big proponents of but anyway absolutely because we we I mean gosh I when did I meet you April like 2017 or 18 I think so we've we've known each other a while we've obviously coached at some different places and have evolved a ton from that and um you know if you haven't been following us for a while um, in the last, actually probably more than a year ago, we both went through some functional courses and certifications and kind of expanded our knowledge in that area because we are of a certain perimenopausal age <laughs> and needed it for our benefit and everyone else's. So that this is kind of what Hot Top Topic Tuesday has evolved into is just like us kind of taking a theme of the month and just sharing um, more, more in like the functional space though, a little bit more around like hormones and gut health issues. Um, we did detox last month and this month you're actually starting the month with us. So we're going to wrap us, uh, do a little um, autoimmunity. So talk about that for the rest of the month. So all of our social media posts will kind of follow along with it and our hot topic Tuesdays will kind of um, follow along with that post. So we are going to do autoimmunity because um, that is also something that we're seeing more and more of um, kind of, a, you know, a lot of unknowns around it too. Um, one thing that we're going to focus on talking about today is that more women um, suffer from autoimmune conditions than men. And what are the reasons behind this? Um, I think it's something like, ah, oh, do you have a number, April? I feel like it's like 80% or something like yeah. that could be wrong. Okay. Yes. It was, well, it was, what is it for every, I think it was, yeah, it was 80%. It was like five for every one male um yeah. is, is 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 prone to being diagnosed with an autoimmune um disease or disorder compared to a male yeah. um in today's hot topic like trish said we are going to go over the five reasons or five reasons why females tend to um be more prone to autoimmune disease or disorders compared to males um just another i mean we love our we love our, our men and all but you know another reason why men just have a little more easier. <laughs> so. But I think we even like, I think one of the reasonings is like, we have actually a better immune system. And we all know that because of the man cold, like that's obvious, right? <laughs> we all, you know, women handle that kind of stuff a lot better, but because of that, our immune system tends to overreact a little bit more. Um, and then, you know, going into like the five reasons, I'll start with um, the first one. The first one is because of hormones. Um, so women obviously have way more hormones going on. There's hormonal fluctuations that's happening all throughout the month and all throughout our lives. Like we've got puberty, you know, pregnancy, um, menopause, perimenopause, like all those situations cause 
hormonal fluctuations, as well as other, you know, factors like gut health and environmental things that cause our hormones to fluctuate. So those hormonal fluctuations are much more likely to, um, you know, have a susceptible to an autoimmune condition, especially estrogen. Um, estrogen, we, it tends to get a bad rap, but we've also talked very, very highly about it too. But Estrogen um, definitely is one of the bigger hormone contributors to um, some autoimmune conditions. And obviously women have that in much more abundance and fluctuating than men do. So the second one is genetic, genetic factors, um, genetic factors, autoimmune diseases will often carry a genetic factor, meaning, you know, like if your mom, for example, was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, then you are more likely to carry that same gene. Um, so genetic factors do definitely play a role. Um, and the, the certain genes associated with um, autoimmune um, conditions may be more prevalent in women compared to men, which increases their susceptibility to the diseases in general. Yep. And number three, we have our chromosomes. Um, so women carry two X chromosomes and it's been thought that the X chromosome is more likely to have um, the presence of, you know, um, mutations and things that can cause autoimmune conditions. So the fact that women are carrying two of those is maybe one of the reasons that we have more susceptibility to those things too. Um, then we have number four is environmental factors. So environmental triggers such as infections, exposures to certain chemicals, stress, um, all those things play a role. And it's funny because for the detox last month, we were talking about a lot about the environmental um, mm -hmm. exposures and stress, um, but they can play a role in the development of autoimmune conditions. Uh, women may have different exposures or responses to these triggers. And if you think about it, women, like we tend to not saying anything negative towards men, but we tend to like, like a cleaner house, you know, so we might use products or cosmetics or, you know, we're just going to be exposed to a lot of those environmental factors, you know, more often and more frequently compared to males in general, um, usually, typically, um, that and the final one is that there's actually some autoimmune conditions like lupus and Sjogren's is one of them that are definitely um, more women specific, just they don't really understand the reasons behind that or, you know, why that happens, probably due to, you know, some of the things we just talked about, like the hormonal fluctuations, um, just women having more an overreactive immune system anyways, but they are, because there's more women specific autoimmune conditions that obviously puts us at a higher likelihood that we'll be contracting those. Um, and Sjogren's actually interesting is I, I didn't really even know much about that till very recently. I had two clients get tested for it. It's um, very, very dry eyes, dry mouth, um, and, you know, just some other like more involved things than just that with it though. Um, they were both negative, but it was one of the things that came up that they wanted to rule out probably because they're female and are having some of those symptoms. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so hopefully this was helpful. Next week, we will continue on the um, continuation for autoimmunity and dig in a little bit deeper. But um, again, if you have any comments, questions, any any anything, um, post on the uh, link. And we look forward to connecting with everybody more <laughs> in a public setting <laughs> rather than our little... I don't know if we would have done this a year ago. I'm proud of us. We're... <laughs> I started to say, right. I'm like so nervous now. We're like, oh, we do these all the time. Who cares? And, and I think in our private group, it has been one thing because it's, it's, it's cozy and, you know, it's, it, it's cozy and we have like our people and everybody knows everybody and all that. So it, it's just more comfortable. It's kind of like the whole public speaking thing, which yeah. is like, um, so anyway, everybody, I hope y'all have a great week and we will see more of y'all soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.